so we finally reached the end of the series and the last match of the World Cup between France and Argentina. And to be honest with you guys, I don't think there were many big mistakes like there were in the Dutch match. But there are still some mistakes that we need to point out that could have honestly changed the whole outcome of the game. Let's get right into it. So the first foul we encounter in this match was the most controversial one. The one that everyone talks about and argues about. And for good reason. And again, I've been preaching it throughout all my videos in this series. The criteria that the refs are using is not a good one. Because it creates this chaos. People are debating whether or not to penalty. I'm going to say it as simple as this. All soft penalties are not penalties. I don't care what player you are. I don't care what team you are. Rules need to be applied for everyone the same way. And again, in this play, we see a soft penalty. There's no argument about that. So when we take a quick look at the replay of this foul, it becomes clear that Di Maria is actually the player that initiates the contact onto the French player's leg. And if we take a look at a different angle, it's even more clear that there's little to no contact in the end. And it got called as a penalty. But we have a different play later in the match that falls under the same category as this same foul we just saw. But that gets called for a simulation. Reason being that Thurum initiates the contact onto the Argentinian player's leg. And that's what we saw in this play. So why was it called as a simulation in that situation, but it was called as a penalty in this situation? Again, VAR should have been present. They weren't there. I'll discuss more about this in a different video, but for now, no one can tell me that this was a penalty if the other wasn't a penalty. For me, neither of them should have been penalties. He gets the right call for Thurum, but he gets the wrong call for Di Maria's dive. But like I said, I'll discuss it more in depth in a different video. Let's move on to the next play. Este, este para mí tiene mis dudas, pero no, no, esto no es que ensuciar lo que ha hecho Argentina. No, pero Argentina que, ha hecho un partido perfecto. Pero hay que decir las cosas claro. claro. Esto no es penal. No. Y lo que más, eh, digamos, eh, extraña es que ni siquiera se haya revisado el bar, porque yo me niego a pensar que cinco o seis árbitros que estén en el bar harán, hayan coincidido todos en que es penal. Insisto, eso no le quita mérito, como dices, sí. Carlos, que Argentina ha sido muy superior, pero esto no era penal. Yo, yo... Just a quick note. I didn't mention the situation in which the Argentine players invaded the pitch as I've already discussed that situation in a different video in more detail. If you guys want to go check out that video, the link will be in the description. You guys can also click the top right of this video to check that situation out. Let's get right back into it. The next play I'm actually going to discuss is not talked about a lot, which was the potential red card for Enzo. And twice, I actually didn't even notice there were two occasions in which Enzo could have received a second yellow, which would have sent him off. The clear foul was when he fouled Coleman near the penalty box, which I hear a lot of people saying this was a penalty. I don't, I don't think this one was a penalty because it was outside the penalty box, but it was for sure a red card at this point for Enzo. He would have received his second yellow. Nothing much to discuss in that situation. The ref clearly missed it. And I'm not sure how any other refs or anyone in the VAR room told the ref that he should have been booked. But like I said again, terrible job. And I also forgot to mention that the ref actually needed to stop the play in that moment. Knowing that Enzo was already booked for a yellow, he needed to stop the play and book him for a red. And then here's another quick replay in which he also escaped another second yellow he already had a yellow at this point in time 
and he escaped another yellow. But of course, the clear one that I wanted to mention was the first one, which was on Coleman. And it could have essentially changed the outcome in the end. Argentina would have been playing with 10 players in overtime, and France would have been playing with 11. But yeah, these are big mistakes in a final, in my eyes, but they're not as bad as other occasions. Overall, he didn't do a bad job, but he didn't do a great job. I still think there were better options for refs, but things happen. There's not much to say. The series is finally over, and I'm just and I'm gonna discuss more in, more in depth other stuff in other videos, and try to get as many valid arguments as possible.